It's all it's all glad. <laughs> Right. Hello, Michael Hudson. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> I know. I just thought, like, I don't know why. I just need to do an announcer sort of thing when I when I say hello to people. Um, okay. So that that was... that that phone connection bed thing. That's cool. Just <laughs> just clock that. Like that's that's great. <laughs> Unreal. That's that's brilliant. Love that. If I, if I wasn't in my late twenties and I had TikTok, I would be using that to be a TikTok star. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, unfortunately, I'm a lot closer to thirty than I'd like, so it's really <laughs> to be TikToks to you, and I'm like, I don't have it. Don't know. <laughs> oh, we we just got an official SIYT one, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, oh, this is too much for me. <laughs> I'm like, give me buying or give me death. Like, just bring yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. Right. So let's get back. Let's go from the beginning. When did you join SIYT? Um, I joined uh, SIYT in 2009. So um, I've been part of Huntington Youth Theatre for about six years before that. And then um, I was getting closer to a different group of people at school, and a couple of them were part of SIYT. And not that there was like a rivalry, but it was just kind of. We both had the same hobby, like we all had the same hobby, and we just weren't doing it together. <laughs> um, and the time kind of like just came to for me to go look. I do want to do something a little bit different. The kind of shows that SIYT were doing were a little bit more my kind of style. What I wanted to do in terms of uh, those, so I I, I made the jump, <laughs> um, and I have nothing about like. There was zero regrets about doing it because it was very tough at the time because what I was like 15, 16, and of course when you're 15, like five years seems like the longest time ever. So um, a part of me was like, oh my god, am I being a traitor? Am I going to lose all my friends from the pre from my previous youth theatre? But there was nothing. I still had those amazing friends. I'm still friends with those people, but I got I was able to have three years of amazing memories with new people that I met at SIT. And uh, what a year to join as well, 2009, like yeah. going to the Fringe. Yeah, literally. Um, my, so I came to see Romeo and Juliet as a kind of like my tester of whether you see it was going to be the right one for me. And I was blown away uh, straight away. Um, and then I auditioned like a couple of weeks afterwards. And I remember it was literally, I auditioned then... Four days later, I auditioned for Tom Sawyer. <laughs> and then about a week after that, I auditioned for Vision for Edinburgh. So within the space of like three weeks, yeah. I auditioned like three times. And Jonathan made me do a different audition piece for every <laughs> single one. <laughs> just like, baptism of fire. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had to learn so much material <laughs> in such a short space of time. Because... Yeah. <laughs> With vision as well. It's not like it's a show that everybody knows. <laughs> <laughs> like, here's she music for this song. I'm like, cool, okay. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> and so let's let's talk about um, one of your main roles as well, which was yeah. which was in Bang Bang You're Dead. Oh, um, I was chorus member number 14 in Tom's <laughs> <laughs> um, Because that role, I don't know about the chorus member, whether you had to do anything with your hair, but you had to do something with your hair for, for Bang Bang You're Dead. Josh in Bang Bang You're Dead remains to this day the role for me. It is the one that pushed me most as an actor, the one that uh, made me bond and connect with my fellow like cast and crew members the most, and then also went through the most physical kind of like transformation as well. So um, because Josh is this gun-toting, gun-obsessed, like army obsessed nut job and um, Tyler decided that he wanted uh, Josh to have a shaved head and he said that from day one like in the auditions he was like I want Josh to have a shaved head so if there's anyone who's not okay with that then you're going to be out of the running and at the time he was possibly considering Josh as a girl as well and I remember Beth and Morris yeah, and was there were the only two girls that said you know what fine I'll do it <laughs> um so I knew straight away that we were going to shave my head, but then all through the process, 
Tyler and Trish were like, yeah, it, it's not going to be like bicking it, though. It's going to be like a, a crew cut. And they kept saying crew cut. And to me, that means, yeah, like nothing here, but still tiny hairs at the top. And the day came, I, it was like two weeks before the show. It was February. So cold. And Trish just came at me with a zero grade, like, <laughs> clippers and went, <laughs> obviously, not, not, I was sat down. Yeah. Was, <laughs> <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> Chase you around the black theatre. <laughs> yeah, I sat down and, I, and to be fair, my hair was a similar length to what it is now, actually. Um, and, and literally going from this to just being completely bald at 17 years old was a bit of a shock and <laughs> I, I drove home and my mum's face was she just went white she was like this is not a crew cut I'm like what? she was like you told me this was going to be a crew cut I'm like yeah this is a I was 17 I had no idea I was like this is a crew cut she was like no that is zero hair on your head and she was so angry she so my mum had known Trish Lloyd for years just because like me and Borny and like Finn, we all like lived in similar places and went to the same schools and stuff. Mum rang up Trish and was like, How dare you like screamed at the phone Trish? And rang, was like, Give me Tyler's number. I'm going to ring Tyler. Rang Tyler and Jonathan and properly shouted at them saying that this was not what was, what was agreed. <laughs> I, I wasn't that fast. So I was like, Looks good. It's going to yeah. be really great for the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it did. Like, it was such a turning point in the characterization of it. Obviously, we worked so hard on the characterization. We did some really intense like, hot seating. Uh, we did one exercise where literally the, te- the 11 of us in the cast literally were walking around in ca- uh, Thorndale Primary School for like two whole hours in character. And I had to shoot everyone. They had to like run and hide from me. It was really traumatic, but so good for the character. And even things like shaving my head and then when I was in full costume, it just brought everything together in that really kind of like the penny dropped moment. And it allowed it to be, if I just said say myself, a really great performance. Like It was. Um, like yeah. people that I know from home still talk to me about that play. I don't shut up about that play. <laughs> uh, I've directed it uh, a couple of years ago myself and that was a real like game changer being on the other side of it as well. Because uh, so like when me and Tyler were crossing paths here, like, we are incredibly close, even, like, ten years later. God, ten years. <laughs> <laughs> but, and a lot of that came from in Bang Bang You're Dead, because, yeah, I was 17, he was early 20s. Mm. I'm going to be nice to say early 20s. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and um, we just became so incredibly close, because so many rehearsals were literally, like, one-on-one rehearsals for like two, three hours whilst everybody else was playing games and playing the I love you stuff mm. and <laughs> doing the free frame game and me and Tyler were in like a separate room and he's like goading me to try and get this like anger out of me. <laughs> Very weird experience but an amazing <laughs> play and really challenging to everyone involved as well. It was a really good season actually because that was when we did Lord of the Flies at the mm, same yeah. time. It was like a dual show and uh, I know Jonathan kind of like planned it as this, like showing violence in young people. Um, but Lord of the Flies is obviously something that people know so well, or um, mm. well, they think they know it really yeah. well. They, they've seen the Simpsons parody of it. So they <laughs> <laughs> but um, even that production put like a completely different light on it because they gender swapped a couple of the performances, they made it. I mean, it's a dark play anyway, but they made it oh so much more darker. Mm. And then because it was, that was like a full show, and then Bang Bang Your Dead's only about 45 to 50 minutes long, but because it's without a break, it feels like it really draws out. And so the audience just must have been exhausted by yeah. the end of that, <laughs> those nights, because you get no respite. Everything's just super dark, super yeah. tormented. <laughs> And really, long, so. yeah, that's you, Fisher. Yeah, I think I think we did the same thing this spring with DNA and Harold Pinter. So, yeah, so we, 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 sorry, go on. Props to all the parents who've sat through these really dark, yeah. depressing shows for like four hours. Oh man, yeah, yeah. It's, it, is, it is something that we you know, I find really funny. I'm like, I, I spoke to um, a couple of parents after after our shows, and he was like. And one of the dads was like, well done for that. No idea what just happened, but well done. <laughs> um, 
but let's let's talk about other favourite shows that you, that you were in. So, um, Journey's End uh, was one of the best things ever as well. I mean, oh, yeah. just because of the level of professionalism that we kind of like felt throughout that show. But obviously, the set was a huge kind of part of it. But the costumes, the props, the amount of like investment that we put into that show. I remember at, at the time, we it elevated our performance because we felt like, oh my god, we're getting the chance to do this. Like so often. Sometimes, like, Andram productions can feel underfunded. You don't have the budget, you don't have the set, you don't have the costume that you know need, you need to make it right. But with you fear in general, but especially Journey's End, we didn't have that because they really put the effort and the cost and the investment into that show. And it made it feel better as a production. And because we were working so hard on stage and getting the rewards of it like the amount of standing ovations we got in that show was just mm. mind-blowing mm. um but then it made us better as a cast backstage as well like behind the scenes of journey's end was literally the funniest time <laughs> yeah <laughs> um i'm sure i can find for you the video of us dancing to barbara streisand yeah or, oh, yeah, or, yeah. Or, uh, or, it will almost certainly be in this edit I'll, i will find it out and i'll put it in this edit <laughs> just like the anthem for like just getting ready and like messing about with each other it was just such a good show and um, it feels bad because obviously there weren't really none of the girls got to be involved <laughs> yeah but yeah it, 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 it was such a such a obviously like all the roles are male but it was such a good time to sort of bond and we weren't like properly like led 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 sort of like were we? no, it wasn't was happy at all i mean you had me <laughs> 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 Uh, the paragons of like masculinity. I don't know if there, but <laughs> um, it was a really good chance for us to bond as a group, even with people that we didn't really know that well at the time. So I got to know Nathan uh, quite well during that show. Uh, before uh, before he dropped out, then um, me and Max got a lot closer during that show. Mm. Whereas we hadn't really spoken. Well, we'd, we'd spoken, but not at the same level as during that show. When especially because me and Max spent a lot of time off stage with smaller characters and we just uh, had the most like tremendous fun doing it on animal stage such a good show i went to see a version of it a few years ago in sheffield actually and it was really weird because they um they didn't swap the characters to be female but they cast women as some of the men and i thought it was going to like draw me out of it but it really didn't and it just shows that the actual script and the material itself is what draws you in and mm. if the performance is there that's what makes the show it's not not the actual set and the costumes and making it look authentic that does that but for us as 16 and 17 year olds it really helped make you feel like people actually care about the performance that we're doing 
Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, exactly. it was. I mean, just on just to piggyback on that. I mean, you're saying you know it made us feel more professional. I mean, it was a professional set. I mean, we did a trip yeah. to go and watch at the the Keith Theatre in Peterborough this touring production of Journey's End, and then Jonathan was like, "I want that set." And <laughs> I, I don't think the committee got much say on it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and then there we were, you know, X months later with, with the professional touring set of Journey's End at that time, you know, which was... It whenever, was in, sorry, go, go, go. I was going to say, whenever that photo comes up on my, like, Facebook memories or my time hop, I show anyone that I can. I'm like, this, this is the set because so good and even again the fun of it like and you know at the very end when you were dead on stage Molly yeah. and we just and the rest of us were stood back and so to throw buckets of like sand and dirt and cloth yeah. off the stage we had to be so quiet because obviously it was this awfully poignant moment of the play that yeah. it was basically the battle of the song and everyone was really sad that you were dead but we are all backstage like launching yeah. dirt <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> onto stage, trying not to laugh, <laughs> and then Tiffany just like hating all of us. <laughs> um, oh, so oh, when did it be like, fun? Just because it's something completely different, like uh, doing a musical of something so well known, but in promenade theatre, which we hadn't really done, and was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least yeah I was going to say to say the very least <laughs> oh, I mean that, that show in general was just a bit of a nightmare because again I think I was like 17 at the time so I thought I was the most mature adult in the world <laughs> and, and trying to control what 30, 11 to 18 year olds um, that were being actively told go and run around and pretend you're an animal I just remember being like eyes rolling so much that they were stuck to the back of his head. Like, um, <laughs> it was very fun though. Again, it gave me a chance to work with people that I hadn't really like got to know that well. Something very, very different because I literally we went from um, Bang Bang You're Dead into Wind in the Willows. <laughs> so it couldn't have had <laughs> a, a more different character really because I, I was Chief Weasel, uh, and I remember Jonathan was like, "You need to do a Cockney accent." For zero reason. <laughs> uh, like, I was like, Jonathan, I'm, I was born in Stockport and I now talk like the poshest person ever. I really <laughs> need to be learning how to do a cockney accent. Um, it was very fun though. Again, lots of in-jokes. <laughs> um, I've still got the, vi again, I'll see if I can find the video probably if I was doing Benj and Snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that'll, be I remember in, that. that'll be in right now. And it's recording, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> Pro 
programming was a wild ride that year. <laughs> um, and then, in terms of like favorite shows, I'd have to just say Ian as well because I knew that that was going to be my last show. Um, I was one absolutely inconsolable, but also it was a really like emotional play mm. <laughs> as it was as well. Um, I actually only live about twenty minutes away from Ian now. And um, wow. whenever someone mentions it, I'm like, right, I can tell you a million stories <laughs> about these two, and I can tell you about this person. And everyone's like, why do you know so much? <laughs> <laughs> and then when I have to say, oh, I was in a musical about it, and then people go, you were in a musical about the play because people have this conception that musicals are always these like nice, happy, clappy things. <laughs> and I'm like, no, it's actually a really good show. Let me tell you more about it. And they're like, no, Michael, we don't want to hear about a play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but very poignant right now, though, eh? It's basically uh, the same I, story. <laughs> yeah, but we're not going to do it this summer, though. <laughs> no, no. Might, might, <laughs> might be important. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's the thing. Like, it, it does kind of, like, put it into perspective. Like, we're winking about three, four weeks at home where you can still need to get food can still go out but what it was 264 people died over the case of 14 months which because uh, they literally refused to leave the, well they made mm. sure that they didn't leave the village it was a, a third of the village died so yeah. incredible <laughs> isn't it for you. yeah but again that was an amazing show because one it was a real story we got to go like that trip up to eat it would like it was only a couple of weeks before the show. It was absolutely blisteringly hot. Yeah, so it was. a good trip to learn about it. Um, but then during the actual show as well, one, it was a fantastic show. You still have the songs like, trapped in. Um, but, yeah, because it was my last show before I left, and, um, I was, like, the only one leaving as well. You knew oh. something. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say we'd already left you theatre. So, um, and because you just kind of like this, that, and um, so with Amy Lake. So, I was the only like year 13 that I knew that we knew wasn't coming back. Mm. And I just remember it was like the last, it was the last show. Obviously, I mean, a lot of us ended up crying during the last like song anyway because it was so like, uh, much. But then, um, I remember the last ever, like, the last night of it, I came off stage and like Trish pulled back the curtains and I literally the second I stepped like through the curtain I wasn't on stage anymore I was like Ugh! Yeah. <laughs> and was un- yeah. uncontrollably crying for like a solid like hour whilst we all got changed and everything I and remember it. On, yeah. it a million times worse by putting on take that never forget <laughs> <laughs> and, and remember, it was a couple of months later I was at uni uh, on a night out like two in the morning or whatever and never forget came on nightclub and because I was a couple of drinks, people like, "Oh, I wish you there." <laughs> <laughs> and everyone was like, "You're going to be no." <laughs> I mean, I tell you what. On on that, I I remember that so well, and it, I think for one reason is that up until that point, there'd never that I knew of really that well. There'd never been a lever that you know had sort of gone through it, however many years they were part of it, and then was was there right to the very end because most people kind of a lot back in sort of our days you know people sort of filtered out by the sort of the last year of six when people were kind of not really paying so much attention to it because you yeah, know it's a lot of responsibility it's on exams or something yeah and yeah. that was what like that's the day when like kate and people did wasn't it they yeah. kind of had a slow leave because they'd keep turning up every now and then but whereas yeah i yeah. was there right up until the last thing and then it was very much by the way, in September, you're not going to see me yeah. at all. <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I really distinctly remember you coming back and, and, and crying in the Black Theatre. And, and it, it was sort of, it hit me as well, because I was like, this is so strange, because I've, I've seen people leave, you know, but kind of not really thought anything about it, because like you say, they sort of filtered out, they, you know, came back every once in a while, but they never, but you were, you know, you were there, you were with Youth Theatre, you were doing it full out, right until the very end, and you were kind of the first... Yeah. In, in my eyes, at least, through my viewing, to, to kind of do that. Um, so, yeah, I think it was quite a... And, it, and that oh, was quite a turning yeah. point in youth theatre because then everyone did that. You know, then the, then you didn't just join youth theatre for a little while. You were there to the end, you know. It was, there was a big... Yeah. 
you know, there's a long period of time. So, that, so yeah, that, so, that like, so yeah, you can take credit for that. You can take credit for everyone yeah. staying right to the end and like not wanting to go and like literally being no, don't let. Yeah. <laughs> you being the poster child for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a testament to the kind of like group atmosphere that it builds. I mean, because like we've said all this, I was only there for three years. Like there were some people that joined in year seven and did it right the way through mm. to like year 12, 13 kind of thing. Well, that's how it felt because everyone was so incredibly close. Uh, like I said, like me and Tyler became incredibly close. I remember during Ian and Leon was like, he was like heartbroken that I was leaving because I know at the time he was like struggling a lot with uh, his sexuality and bullying him and things like that. And, he said to me more than once that I was this kind of like almost like a like a role model because I was 18 I'd been out for a couple of years I was just living my life and I was really happy and um, things like that so the kind of like group atmosphere that builds from literally day one I mean I was quite lucky I knew a couple of people already so I knew you Sam I knew Amy and Charlie Bay I knew a couple of people already I wasn't coming in completely like brand new but yeah it was Three, four months after that, we were going to Edinburgh, staying there for like a whole week and being like, as if everyone had known each other for absolute years. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is, it's a testament to the group that whether you're there for a term or six years, that you get to be part of this community that is forever part of you, whether that's just you stay Facebook friends with everybody, whether it's just the memories that you kind of put hold of it. But I mean, I left in 2011, so nearly coming up to like nine, ten years ago that I left, but I still follow everything that the museum does. I wish that I could like come down at the drop of a hat to watch some of the stuff. Um, I still am friends with people from the, uh, that I met at museum, and I still, <laughs> really embarrassingly, I still know everything that I did there. I still know choreography from Vision 2009. I still know the lyrics to Tom Sawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just that, like, for certain people, it's that kind of thing that just ingrains itself in you, and you don't want to forget it, and you don't need to forget it, because your relationship with the theatre can just adapt and change. So, like, once lockdown is lifted and I can drive places again, I would love to, and if I'm free, I would love to come down and watch shows, and I always will support it if I can. So, And I'm sure, like, you've proved this with the interviews, that people who did leave 10-plus years ago are still willing to talk about it, still can share their, like, cherished memories of it. Mm. It's it and it's it's been incredible doing this sort of stuff. But um, have you got a favourite moment at E Theatre? Favourite moment. Oh, I can't wait, my man. Um, <laughs> favourite moment. Um, um, one of them definitely has to be Vision during the Fringe because I remember um I was given a solo verse in um, one of the songs and that was just like kind of like game changing being 16 years old and having and being a soloist at the world's biggest theatre festival it's just something that I never kind of imagined mm. um, other than that I would probably say Bang Bang because like every performance of Bang Bang You're Dead was incredibly challenging really pushed me as an actor but made me really appreciative of like everything thing that you can really do to really put into a performance and that's everyone involved as well like um sean was amazing in that lizette was amazing in that and they um everyone involved just put so much effort into it and it shows because when i'm like sad or ill especially when i'm ill i'm a complete egotist and i will go back and watch og 30 these and bang bang is always the easiest because it's on youtube <laughs> <laughs> It'll put the link up, probably. Yeah, uh, that'll be, like, here. <laughs> link you to my version as well. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Um, so, post you theatre, what have you been up to? Um, so, I left uh, to go to uni. I came to Sheffield Hallam in 2011, um, and I've just kind of never left. <laughs> I've always stayed in Sheffield. Uh, throughout uni, I was super involved with uh, the Drama Society at uni. I was a director, a choreographer, a producer. I was on committee for two years as marketing and vice chair. Um, really super involved. Yeah. <laughs> um, and some of that is like by uh, bringing my knowledge that I learned through 
new theatre. Uh, I did Bang Bang You're Dead with my university uh, drama society. Um, and then I kind of like put into practice my kind of what I wanted to do as a career. So I got really into arts marketing and uh, the promotion of uh, theatre events, which I then did my dissertation on. I worked at a theatre in Sheffield uh, as their marketing department. Then uh, after uni, uh, I've been part of a couple of different Amdram groups. So uh, one, uh, which is called Croft, uh, Croft House Theatre Company, where I performed uh, at the Lyceum, which is the... So Sheffield Theatres has two theatres, but Sheffield Theatres is the largest uh, theatre complex outside of London in the UK. So doing Priscilla, Queen of the Desert was an amazing experience to do that because we sold out six shows. So that's 1,200 people a night, which is just oh. next level, especially in possibly the gayest musical ever. <laughs> 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 I had 13 costume changes in that show. Wow, brilliant. Uh, I'll send you some of the photos, Wally, because yes. they are amazing. Um, and I was one of 42 cast members, and I did not have the most costume changes. Jeez. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've heard that shows like a lot of yeah. a lot of costumes, oh, and not, not even not even like simple costumes, is it? <laughs> no, 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 no. Again, I'll send you some of the photos. I was the ensemble, but uh, my costumes were the most elaborate thing. I was a showgirl. I was um, uh, everything under the sun, basically. One of my outfits was literally a leather, a black leather kilt. End of list. Oh right. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we danced to Venus, and then it went into um, "Don't Leave Me This Way," which was a funeral scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, so that was a real experience with um, Croft. But then uh, a couple of years ago, me and some friends that we met at uni, we said, "Look, we we really miss being in our uni drama group together. We miss performing and things." So we decided to create our own theatre company. Brilliant. Uh, okay. Um, it's called Butterside Up Theatre Company. Right. And uh, basically, because um, we did Sousa Call the Musical years ago at uni, and one of the like plot points in it is that there's a war going on on whether you should eat toast Butterside Up or Butterside Down. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. It's an incredible, it's yeah. an incredible musical with so many messages. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, seriously, I genuinely think you should consider it. I was telling Frankie and Mozart about it years ago because there are so many cool parts and you should really consider doing it. <laughs> it was one of the things I first actually like pushed yeah. for. Is uh, it? Um, and I would 100% come down and help in any way I can. But yes, yeah, so we <laughs> loved being in Susan Cool. And so me and uh, two friends, Becky and Lucy, we all met at uni and we said, let's set up our own company. And we and we just did. Um, we're really proud of how it's gone. So yeah, it's been going about three years-ish now. Um, we've done two to three shows a year uh, since we launched. And mm. um, unfortunately, we've had to like put everything on hold, obviously, because of coronavirus. But uh, we were meant to be putting on Game of Thrones, this brief musical, uh, last month, Fantastic. which was hilarious. Um, we've done Batman, this brief musical. Where, which I wrote and directed a few years ago. Uh, we've done Macbeth, where Macbeth and Lady Macbeth were both women, set in the 1980s. 80s lesbian Macbeth is just the only way it should be. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we've done classics like The Importance of Being Earnest as well. So really like broad range of stuff, mm -hmm. but such an amazing kind of opportunity to basically like try and build the same feeling of community that we had at Youth Theatre with people like who want the same thing. They want an opportunity to perform and to have fun acting, singing, yeah. dancing and things. And um, yeah, we're really happy with how our setup's going. Like I say, after lockdown, when we can do Game of Thrones, the spoof musical again, will be a lot of fun. Uh, we've got a lot of plans for how we want it to like build and develop, but I wouldn't have had that kind of like push and that urge and that confidence uh, in my like theatre knowledge had I not been able to do a lot of stuff in youth theatre. So again, like I've got friends uh, who've done like Amdram up and down the country before they like came to uni and things, and sometimes they were literally not allowed to do any of it. They were the actors on stage, and that was it. But when we were at youth theatre, we all kinds of like workshops and knowledge and understanding to be every part of it so when we did journey's end and obviously the girls didn't really have a part on stage they got to learn about stage management they did sound and lights and costume and everything and that's that knowledge that i built up through even my three years there 
helped me get that knowledge and that confidence to go, yeah, let's make my own theatre company. Yeah. <laughs> Any, anyone. Excellent. Can do it. <laughs> well, it's, Excellent. It's just testament, isn't it? Testament to it. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, do you have any words of wisdom, any advice for our current members? Um, I'd just say get involved. Like, even if you don't necessarily get the part that you want, like, again, when you're a teenager, it can feel like the end of the world <laughs> if you don't do as well in your audition as you think or uh, things like that. But Getting involved and staying involved in your theatre will mean that you will get something out of it. So whether it's the, a slightly smaller part than you thought, you'll have more time to be backstage having fun and creating memories of a different sort. If you don't get a part at all, then you've got the opportunity to learn a completely different side, but equally just as important part of putting on theatre is the backstage stuff and actually understanding how it works. <coughs> and then <coughs> even like... If you're just stage management, like on the night, that is one a learning curve, but you can still have tremendous fun doing it. So I'd just say be involved. Like it seems like there are small parts or small ways to be involved, but there really aren't. You will always benefit from getting involved with the idea planning to sweeping up <laughs> at the end of the night. It's good life lessons as yeah. well. I mean, like, um, so you can have like the main part one play but then the next like the next season you, you might not get the biggest part because we want to give everyone the chance to shine or you just might not be the right fit for it and th it's that old phrase there are no small parts just small actors cherish the fact that you might have a smaller part so like for Eam I remember really really vividly wanting the part of Abel um, and I was so angry with myself when I messed up my scales in my audition. I was so upset when I didn't get it at first. But then I was like, hang on, I'm in the last year of like eight levels. So it's actually pretty good that I don't have like four solos and like multiple to learn yeah. and five part harmonies for that song. Yeah. And the fact that I was in a lot less scenes as, what was I called? That was it. And I was the bitter, angry yeah. priest. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, it was a kind of blessing in disguise because I did have more time to balance my youth theatre and my uh, A-levels, but I still had the chance to be involved. I still had an amazing costume, still got to be in all the big scenes and still had an impact in that show, whether I was able or corpse number three. Like, well, to be fair, it could have been because you had so many people die on that show. Yeah. Well, uh, I can't remember who it was. It was some. It was uh, a young lad, and he played like the first plague victim. And obviously, once you died in the show, you had to just go and stand behind that like gauze curtain for the yeah. entire show. And this poor lad, I think he was about like thirteen, and he literally died in like the second scene of E. And then so for the rest of the two hour show he just had to stand there behind the oh, stage. <laughs> oh the, yeah. the things uh, directors make you do, eh? <laughs> well, it's it's a life lesson. Yeah. <laughs> yes. you do stand still <laughs> sometimes Honestly. you have to do things that you don't want to do. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. There we go. Right. Thank you very much for chatting with us. Yeah. Um, it's, it's been yeah, brilliant, uh, as always, throw it back. Um, yeah. um, and we'll, we'll say our goodbyes. See you later. Thank you See very you. much. Bye, guys. Bye. -bye. See you later. Bye.